the following video some of you may find insulting. Others of you um, may get defensive. But the reality of it is that I want you to understand today that I'm not coming to you today to cause you a bad day or coming to you today because I'm being rebellious or coming to you today because I'm jealous of the individuals that we'll speak on today or the churches that we're speaking on today. I say these things because these are the common responses when we speak on a topic that nobody wants to deal with. You see, the Word of God tells us very clearly in Ephesians 5.11 And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That's the part that the church has forgotten to do. The church within the last 40-50 years has forgotten that God's warning for the end times, yes, we speak of famines, earthquakes, extreme weather, all factual. Those are signs that Jesus is coming. We speak of the New World Order, Illuminati, all of these things. These are just signs that Jesus is coming. We speak of all of the diseases that are happening, all of the archaeology that's found confirming the Bible. Beautiful. You have to remember that Matthew 24, 4 says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And today we're going to speak on the false manifestations within the body of Jesus Christ. We're going to talk about the gold dust miracles, the jewels miracles, the diamonds miracles, the rubies miracles. We're going to talk about feelings and how addictive these false fires can be and how they can replace a relationship with God with just a mere glimpse of a false fire that has nothing to offer you because you're high one day but you're low the next. It's a deception. Before we get into it though, I want you to realize something. That I believe in the full gifts of the Spirit. I believe in miracles. I believe in healing. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. I believe that we can pray for a person who's demonically possessed in Jesus Christ and cast out devils. I believe in the power of God, basically. The only thing is, is that I believe that it has to operate under the biblical parameters the scripture has provided to us. And when something that is coming out of the church doesn't align with the scriptures, I can care less what tradition says. Because tradition within the church says that you cannot touch certain things. In other words, if everyone's been doing it wrong... For the past 20 years, we're just supposed to jump on the bandwagon. Well, no. We're supposed to say, no, that's not of God. Stop it. Because God told us to watch for those within the church. Watch for those that are coming to deceive you. For Matthew 24, 11 says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And there is a counterfeit fire within the church. And this counterfeit fire is calling, causing many to have their relationship with God ruined. In Exodus 7, 10, and 11, we see a miraculous move of God with Moses and Aaron. And then we see a counterfeit of Satan. When the Pharaoh used sorcery and magicians and enchantments to mock what God did. These are counterfeit moves that have nothing to do with the gifts of God. And they are meant to cause the church to forget to believe that the gifts of God are alive and well for today's church. But with over 33,000 denominations of every man trying to seek his own way versus seeking the way of Jesus, we are now in a very big mess within the church. I want to show you a clip. This clip is of Guillermo Maldonado and the only bias within the Hispanic church. If you're a person who's a friend of mine on Facebook, I had mentioned that I'm going to make a video on the, the chaos within the Hispanic church. Well, uh, this is it. But it's also going to talk about Bethel Church 
and many American churches that are also partaking in this. When I first started it, I said, let me talk about the things that are happening in the Hispanic church. But then I started figuring that this is happening also in American churches. And, well, you take a look and you be the judge. Look at what these men are saying. That they can turn water into wine. <laughs> and, um, and the gold dust miracles. Now notice when he's turning the so-called water into wine. That the cup where he is going to pour the water into already has a liquid there. So when you mix the water with that liquid, it turns pink. But the body of Christ thinks that that is a miracle. And then they start playing the drum. Well, you watch it. Check it out. ¿Tú crees? ¿Ah? ¿Tú sí crees de verdad? Manténlo ahí entonces. Que tu fe y mi fe se van a unir hoy. declarar qué clase de vino se fundió Merlot Cabernet Sauvignon Weissy Fandel así rojito como la sangre de Cristo ¿está bien? Yes, yes ¿listo? háblale háblale al agua háblale al agua no, háblale, háblale te vas a competir ahora gracias yes, yes, yes Yes. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God!
Alguien adore a Dios. Tus manos, el primero que está aquí, en la puerta, cierra tus manos. Mírame, mírame, hombre, mírame, cierra tus manos. Ok. ¿Usted cree que si yo declaro que comience a aparecer oro sobre él? Esto no va a ser que alguien tiró oro por la silla y apareció. Esto va a ser que va a venir oro a la existencia sobre él cuando yo lo declare. Oh, yo no sé si alguien me está siguiendo en este lugar. Cierra tus manos. Porque cuando cuente hasta tres, vas a encontrar oro en tus manos. Es más, vas a encontrarlo sobre tus hombros y sobre ti. A la una... Mmm, y esto es solamente porque desde la izquierda va a comenzarse a moverse a la derecha ¿Alguien está listo ahora? A las dos, Señor gracias por tu gloria ¿Por qué oro? ¿Por qué estas cosas? Porque Dios trae cosas a la existencia que representa su gloria Para que tú sepas que la gloria de Dios está en el lugar Ah, quisiera tener a alguien allí Gracias Señor A las tres Ahora comienza a buscar en tus manos Vas a comenzar a encontrar oro ahora en tus manos Oh oh, oh oh, oh oh, oh oh, lo estoy viendo hasta aquí Oh my God, oh my God ¡Ah! Mira, 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 mira Vamos a ver quién se queda con duda ahora de que la gloria está en este lugar. ¡Alguien grita! Isaiah 56:11. Yea, there are greedy dogs, which can never have enough, and there are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain from his own quarter. If you notice, as soon as he poured the water into the cup that already had a liquid in it, and it turned into uh, pink, he started yelling. And then the drums started playing faster. And then you saw the so-called apostle, Guillermo Maldonado, start doing jumping jacks in the background. And then you see him yell like if, you know, somebody had died or something. It's ridiculous, man. This is a spectacle. This is... This is not even a good fake type of a thing. You see, because within the Catholic Church, they have false miracles. Do you know that in South America, the statues cry blood and they cry tears? They're not fake. Those are the occult. Witchcraft. But this right here, this is faker than... I mean, I can go to the Dollar Tree and, find, and buy you some... A bag of little fake jewels for a dollar. You never been to the Dollar Tree? You can buy a whole bunch of stuff for a dollar. This is the type of fake things that are going on in the church. This is not even something that you can say it's, wow, this is a miraculous satanic power. No. These are two individuals that claim to have these gold dust miracles and these water into wine miracles. And they're so obvious that they are fake that it saddens me that the church, the Hispanic church, my brothers, my sisters in Miami, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? <laughs> it's, it's, it never ceases to amaze me uh, of what people call the power of God. Because what people call the power of God now is a feeling. The relationship of the modern day believer is all based on feelings, on how I feel. If I wake up in the morning and I'm feeling sad, I must have sinned. I'm not living for God. It could just be that you woke up and you're not feeling good because you went to bed late. You see, God is still the same. He's still Alpha and Omega. Why do you think the scriptures tell us to live by faith and not by sight? Right? That the spirit is willing but the body is weak. Why do you think scripture tells us that? To warn us. 
to warn us and to let us know that we have to seek his kingdom at all times and put our eyes on him and not our earthly feelings. Not our earthly feelings because our earthly feelings are deceptive. Let's play another clip for you and we'll keep on moving forward. Those are the ones that, that uh, fell last night, all right? Yeah, I saw them. A small church in the heart of San Juan, Puerto Rico, has reported the appearance of thousands of gemstones in its sanctuary. Where are these stones coming from? Are they real? And why are they appearing at all? As remarkable as these events may sound, the story hasn't been featured in any significant news coverage. And indeed, aside from a few Christian media outlets, no one seems to be giving these incredible events any notice at all. The pastor of this church is Dennis Rojas a man with a rather eventful background. When I was 16 years old, I received Christ as my personal and exclusive savior. I lived 12 years as a homosexual. I was a professional transvestite. But today I would like to thank God for the liberation and the transformation that he has done in my life through this 32 years that I have served the Lord. One of the reasons Pastor Dennis believes these gems are supernaturally appearing is that this church has dedicated itself to the focused worship and praise of God. These gems began appearing three years ago when Dennis became the pastor of the House of Restoration and Mercy. In this three years, we have had supernatural experiences, manifestations like the oil from the Holy Unction, Manifestations of gold, silver, sapphires, topaz, emerald, rubies. God has sent the angel of precious stones and we have had manifestations of diamonds. This is really something, you know, it's really a blessing and we're really, it's uh, amazing. I mean, we're, we're amazed all the time. Pastor, he, he always feels like, you know, he's like a, a kid. Yeah, he comes out, oh, the angel's in there, the angel's in <laughs> there. This church has grown with physical healings, supernatural healings, creative miracles in the middle of the congregation. And all of this God has done to glorify his name to establish his name on earth and to tell a lot of people from different places, nations that our God is real and true and that the time of miracles has not passed. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow and for all eternity. And this I believe. The first supernatural occurrence in the House of Restoration was the mysterious appearance of oil on the walls and the ceiling of the church. A few months later, oil began to inexplicably saturate and pour out of the Bible on the lectern. First time uh, the oil was manifested on the Bible Fue como el ola a rosa. was the, with the uh, uh, smell of rose. Que significa la, 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 la fragancia del perfume de, del maestro. aceite entonces Dios nos dijo por un profeta en Panamá que venía un aceite con una fragancia nueva y con un propósito entonces que ese aceite era para la sanidad entonces come, comenzó a botar aceite con olor, a, a, con olor y aroma a, a mirra que significa el sufrimiento y el padecimiento del ministerio y eso es lo que ha estado manando hasta ahora 
A few months later, the church was in a prayer meeting, interceding for the city. All of a sudden, that diamond fell uh, on the back of Pastor Wilda's wife. And, and she took it and went into the bathroom, women's bathroom. And she turned on the light. And when she opened her hand, it was a diamond. And she started crying and crying and crying and to shout. Look at the size of that stone. Right. It, uh, according to the experts on diamonds that have seen, have, have told Pastor Dennis that the quality of the rocks depends on the cut, on the on the light, on la luz y que más, and, and, and the transparency. Uh, have any jewelers or experts looked at these? Yes. yes. The big ones, the expert jewelers have seen them, yes. and they took them to analyze them. They say they can't. The material is not from the earth. He took it with a plume, and then he looked. He has a little screen of crystal. And he put it there. And he started to write. And it marked 11.5. And it was 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 11.5. In the book of Exodus, the Bible tells us that the high priest wore breastplates adorned with 12 precious stones. Uh, look at those. Those are the ones. And yes, those are the ones that fell around August just before... Yeah. Well, those are just exactly like the, the, 12, the 12 stones of the Ephod, the tribes of Israel. Okay, that is uh, diamond dust. All right. It's one angel. Yes. And he says it's uh, he's a tall, almost seven or eight feet tall. Okay, you have to look, you look at the oil on the carpet. All right. The carpet is was wet. So when the angel came in, that those impressions, you know, like. In Proverbs 8.10 it says, Receive my instructions and not silver, and knowledge rather than the choice gold. The scriptures go on to tell us, in verse 11, For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. The scriptures tell us, in his word, to receive the instructions of God, the commandments of God, the teachings of God, to receive the knowledge of God, to receive the wisdom of God. And it compares all of that to silver, the choice gold, the best gold available, and to rubies. Amazing. Yet today's church believes that the miracles of God happening in 2013, right? are evidenced on rubies, gold dust, and miraculous things such as that. That, that is exactly what tells of the church today. We lack instruction, we lack knowledge, we lack wisdom, but we're full of rubies, we're full of gold, and we're full of fake silver. It's a counterfeit church. And most of you that are watching this are in agreement, but there's going to be some that are going to be very defensive and will say, don't put God in a box. 
Well, this is not putting God in the box. This is using God's word to tell you the truth on the matter. For God changes not. God's word says it very clearly. In Malachi 3.6 For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. God changes not. God tells the church to seek instruction, knowledge, and wisdom, and the church is seeking gold, rubies, and silver. I thought it was just limited to the Hispanic church, but it's not. Bethel Church, an American church, I believe, in California, and it has a lot of daughter branches all over the world. And it's not just Bethel, Bethel Church, a lot of churches. They're buying into these lies. And as I've said, some of it is more satanic than others. The one in Puerto Rico, you saw that that's some crazy stuff right there. Uh, the one with Guillermo and Dionis, Baez, that right there is faker than anything that you can see. But let's see the Bethel Church movement. Let's take a look at what they call the glory cloud. Check it out. conference we just uh were worshiping and as we I, like i turned around from the fire tunnel and
fire tunnel and I was like standing in this cloud of like gold dust that was like falling from the sky and so I grabbed Gail who was standing next to me and I was like Gail it's raining gold dust and she started freaking out and then um, Sherry Downs was right across from me in the fire tunnel and so I was like Sherry gold dust and then as more and more people saw that it was raining gold dust in this little pocket of the corner of the church everyone just started pointing and screaming and then it, so we were looking up and it was like um, it was like somebody standing way high above us like probably 15 feet above us and it was like it was like somebody standing up there mm -hmm. with uh, with glitter or something and just throwing it down and it was like clouds of gold dust and it was just raining down on us it was like it was like somebody standing up there mm -hmm. with uh, with glitter or something and just throwing it down and it was like clouds of gold dust and it was just raining so down on my hands if you can get it. I don't know if you can get it on the iPhone. Oh uh, yeah, you can see but it. Dang, it's a lot. I don't see it. <laughs> I mean, I can see it, I just can't see Put it on the phone. Wait, wait. It won't focus. You gotta get a little focus. Oh. oh. Got some weird, got some shinies. Shining. Oh my gosh. It might be on my black shirt too. Luke 1231. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all of these things shall be added to you. I mentioned earlier about feelings, and how the church believes that their relationship with God is based on feelings, on how you feel today. If I'm going to base my relationship with God on the earthly feelings that I feel because I'm in a depraved world, in an occult world, which is constantly attacking my walk with Jesus. If I was only going to focus on that, how could I survive in this world? But this is why scripture tells us that we live by faith, not by sight. This is why scripture tells us to seek his kingdom and everything else is going to be added. Don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about the feelings about anything else. Worry about the kingdom. Worry about seeking Jesus. But these false fires within the church, what they aim to do is, number one, cause people to believe that healing is not for today's church. And that is a lie. Cause people to believe that casting out demons, that praying for the sick, that people being healed, the miraculous, the gifts of the Spirit, the love of God, is not real. And what's happened is, as a result, we have a lot of cemetery churches in the United States of America who deny the gifts of the Spirit. And they take one extreme, which is this gold dust phenomenon, and take it to the other extreme, which is the dead church, where the pastor can ramble on for hours and not one person gets saved. Nothing more than a social club. Three songs, offering, preaching, out the door, another church is coming in. The church has been caught up in this feeling type of a relationship with God versus a relationship with God that is based on full 100 commitment to his kingdom, to his righteousness, to his power, to his holiness. Because regardless of how you woke up feeling this week, his work is already finished. And if he said, and if he separated you, and if he's called you into his kingdom, and if he's convicting you daily, keep on following him, not your feelings. For feelings are very deceptive. Feeling is very deceptive. Um, there's a word of God that says, I'm finding it right now because I just feel like bringing it forth to the table to prove my point. I just found it. Bear with me one second, and I'm sorry for doing this, but I just feel like this is very important to you to prove to you what I'm talking about. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with the temptation also make a way to escape it, that ye may be able to bear it. You see, we live in a human body, the flesh. And what happens is, when you see something inappropriate, uh, whether it be you're surfing through the net and you see an ad of a female that it's inappropriate, 
your body gets a feeling and that feeling leads you to a sin you see and that becomes addictive there's certain people that are addicted to that okay God says that when that temptation that feeling that urge comes through to not give in to it because he will make a way to escape how is that way to escape by putting your eyesight on Jesus Christ and his kingdom and his kingdom only but the church is doing nothing different than what the church did when Moses went up on the mount they're creating a golden calf and they're dressing up a version of Yahweh that isn't him and they're trying to convince the world that these are moves of God although the Word of God clearly says that they're not Psalm 19 9 through 10 says the fear of the Lord is clean enduring forever the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether more to be desired are they than gold yeah than much fine gold sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb while the church is telling you that these manifestations of gold and the glory cloud and and they're yelling and the pianos playing these are temptations believe it or not these are feelings these are urges that are coming forth and and they give you a spiritual type of a high but this spiritual high is temporary and when it goes away you fall back to the same lifestyle and the same things and this is why a lot of deliverance ministries not all there are some that are very biblical but the large majority of them keep people in bondage okay because the same people have to come for deliverance every week every week every week for, for crying out loud what's going on here something's not working okay it's because people base their relationship on God on their feelings and not on a commitment with Jesus Christ and living pure and holy for him yes we fall yes we stumble but our relationship with God is not based on how we feel it's not based on how we woke up that morning no our source of our joy is him always 2 Corinthians 11 13 through 14 for such a false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into the angel of light. We're talking about individuals that come to the church and speak the Christianese. And I heard a term this week, I believe it's called church crack. Um, just like there's crack in the world, well, this is like church crack to a lot of believers. Exit Church Christianity mentioned that the other day. It's, it's addictive. And if that is you today who's addicted to this, I want you to know that there's deliverance in Jesus Christ. True deliverance that lasts forever. Not a day. Not a week. This is not about you feeling awesome for God when you go to a retreat for a day. And then after a couple of weeks, you're back to the same thing. This is not about feeling awesome on Sunday. And Monday coming back to the same thing. This is about understanding that this is not about your feelings. But it is about living for Jesus Christ every single day, regardless of how you feel. For regardless for how you feel, He's still Alpha, Omega, first and last, and God. I remember when I was a believer, early believer. Like I said, I've always gone to the Hispanic church. I believe I was a believer for a year and a half. A year. I was a baby believer. And I thought that a lot of these things were what meant a relationship with God. And I remember one time I went to church and everyone was falling back when they prayed for them. And I'm standing there in the front and I felt the peer pressure. And the man prayed for me. And I was like, what am I going to do? Right? <laughs> I mean, if I stay up here, they're going to think I'm a devil. So as soon as the man pushed me, I fell back. Now I feel bad for the uh, for them catchers. I feel bad for them because I'm a big dude. I still have a hernia to this day, but they caught me. Anyhow, as I'm laying on the ground, I'm thinking to myself, what do I do now? You know what I mean? I got my eyes closed. 
and people around me are I'm like you know peeking through my eyes a little bit and they're like in you know they're chilling so I'm like I can't get up now but as soon as they start getting up I get up I get home and I'm thinking to myself what did I just do you know I mean I just went with the flow you know just because the church has done a tradition for a long time that doesn't mean that it's a biblical tradition okay and I'm not saying that God cannot touch people and that God, you know, I've had situations where I'm feeling the presence of God and I have to sit down. But that doesn't mean that I just, you know, let's put it this way. If the church stopped using catchers behind people, I guarantee you a lot of the false manifestations will stop. Okay? Because a lot of people will not fall and hit their head on the concrete if somebody was not behind them holding them. Just saying. Like I said, I believe in the gifts of the Spirit, but I also believe that a lot of what is going on within the church is unbiblical. And it is meant to destroy the relationship between people and God and replace it with a counterfeit that cannot fulfill the thirst that inner man has. That it can only be fulfilled with the living waters of Jesus Christ. One time I had an individual <laughs> and this is a funny situation that happened. An individual that came to my house, he was a so-called prophet. And he said he had to come to my house. He said, Tally, I have to go to your house. And my wife has always been very skeptical of it, but I wasn't. I was like, baby, he's the man of God. How are we not going to let this man of God come to the house? So he shows up at the house and he says he has to anoint the house. But the dude has this bottle of Goya oil, like cooking oil, <laughs> and the man starts sprinkling that oil everywhere, dude. I'm talking about he's like, if it's the exorcist, he's just squirting oil everywhere, all over the house. He goes into the bedroom, starts squirting it everywhere. I mean, the house was a disaster, a true disaster. The sheets were all full of oil. Everything was full of oil. You had oil stains on the walls. We're not talking about just like a little dab of oil. Let me print. No, no, no. The man was, he wasted a whole bottle of Goya oil on the house. And then I'm standing in the kitchen. And he points at me and he goes, you have an angel standing right next to you. And I'm here freaking out. I'm like, I'm moving away from this, whoever, whatever this angel is. So I'm walking towards, <laughs> I'm like walking towards the, another spot in the house. And he leaves the house and here I am. This is like a year into the faith. I was a baby in the Lord. This is like 10 years ago. And he leaves and I tell my wife, man, you saw the power of God. She's like, you better hope for the power of God to clean up this house. Because you don't brought that man in here. You don't ruin the only shoes we had. He really did. Um, you had people coming to my house, like, you know, family members and friends. And they're like, what's going on with the walls, dude? Like the walls had literal marks of Goya oil dripping out of them. It's like a haunted house. I thought that was a move of God. I thought that was miraculous. But that wasn't. You see? In the earthly and in the emotional, you think that's a move of God. Because you get your endorphins going on and you get your little spiritual high. But what happened when that spiritual high leaves? What do you do? You go back searching for more. It's an addiction. I'm telling you. It's an addiction. Years later, I went back to a church. And I was growing in the Lord. And this man is going to pray for me. And um, as he's going to pray for me, he's praying for people and they're falling back. And this time I said, you know what? I am not going to fall back. This is like about a year and a half, two years later. I was still a baby in the Lord. This is like 2000. 2004 around there so the man grabs me by my neck and he presses his thumb around me I mean he's like the Vulcan death grip he's grabbing me and he's pushing me and back then I was still a baby believer and not like now now I won't let just anybody lay hands on me and we'll talk about that in another video on laying hands but this individual was pushing me back and he was doing this like like I said this grip on me like a chokehold he was trying to do the stone cold stunner or something I don't know what he was trying to do but anyhow he started pushing me back okay 
And as he's pushing me back, number one, I was heated because I'm Puerto Rican. You know, we got hot blood. And, and um, I was about to, you know, like smack him beside that because he was, he was grabbing me on my neck. And the dude was like literally doing like a wrestling move on me. Anyways, he's pushing me back. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to fall back. So I push him forward. He's pushing me back and I'm pushing him forward. We're like we're dancing back and forth. And I'm looking at him in his eyes. I'm me mugging him. You know? And um, he's looking at me in the eye. But then he starts looking down ashamed. You know? So he walks away. And he says, I'll come back. We need to pray for you some more. I'm like, you ain't touching me again, boy. So I walk away from, from that situation. That was kind of when God started waking me up to all of this stuff. And I started building a true relationship with God. And I'm walking away from it. And he starts praying for one of the pastors. And the pastor, he fell back in such a fake way. That it disgusted me. He fell back like if, you know, like the them Olympic divers when they jump up in the air. Like they're falling back. Like, you know, too orchestrated. You know. That point in time, I went to the senior pastor right there in front of everybody. And I said, yo, this is not of God. He said, this is just the old school way of how they minister. They made excuses for it. And I told them the same thing that I'm going to tell you. Just because old school people did it, that doesn't make it biblical. It just means that it's an error that has been repeated over and over and over again. And this is why the church is at the status that it is. But God wants you today to have a true relationship with him, not based on spiritual highs or feelings but based on his awesome holiness and power that can get you and transform you and set you free. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that this message is received well because you know that I did not mean to degrade anybody but rather to bring people closer to you. You know very well that I could have given a lot of more examples of what I've witnessed within the body of Jesus Christ in the Hispanic church, but we'll limit it at what it is right now. Father, I pray that you may convict people to compare what their ministry is doing to the scripture and that they can remove their golden calves from their lives. For many, their golden calf has become their pastor, their apostle. For others that are ministers, their ministries are their golden calf. These are idols, Heavenly Father, that the body of Jesus Christ has to let go to truly have a relationship with you. And until the body of Christ lets these idols go, they will be in bondage. Father, bring them out of that in your precious name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's read a Bible verse before we end. For I believe it's very important. Acts 16, 16 through 18. And it came to pass that we went to prayer. A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by sooth, saying, The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High, which shew us unto the way of salvation. If you are a brother and sister that has gone to many Hispanic churches, and now I see American churches as well, and you've seen how many times people have come to you saying, Thus says the Lord, and thus says the Lord came and went and nothing happened. And on YouTube, so many people that will say, I'm not a prophet, but I feel from the Lord to say this. And then it doesn't pass, and yet they'll do it again. Oh, I fell from the Lord to do this. I'd rather say than not say. Well, if you fell from the Lord to do it once and it didn't come to pass, be quiet and zip your mouth and just preach the gospel. For there are a lot of spirits of divination running wild in the church and if you claim to be a prophet a teacher an apostle a minister and what you're saying doesn't align with the word of God even if you're feeling that false spirit of Satan which as this lady had a spirit of divination and did this she many days but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her that same hour. I commanded the spirit of witchcraft in your life leave. 
The spirit of false fire, leave. The spirit of false tongues, leave. The spirit of false movement of the spirit, leave. For the gifts of the spirit of God are real. And a lot of people are living the counterfeit, not the real movements of God. Believe and repent. May God bless.